Now, NBC5 investigates Illinois has very tight rules for how cannabis can be transported and delivered. In fact, those rules are stricter than the federal guidelines for opioids, the most abused drug in America. Here's the story from Phil Rogers. We have more to grab? Yeah. We're at a distribution center for Cresco Labs in suburban Chicago. And what these workers are loading 3365. is one of the most tightly controlled cargoes in America. The cargo is legal cannabis, at least legal in the eyes of the state of Illinois. But the rules for how it's transported are spelled out in pages of state regulations. Security is aware of every shipment that goes out, where it's heading, what time they should arrive. That security actually starts all the way back when the cannabis plants are grown. Each plant receives its own barcoded number. And those numbers follow the plants and their products through processing here at Cresco's suburban facilities, all the way through packaging, transport, and delivery to dispensaries statewide. Correct. And we refer to it as seed to sale. Illinois law requires cannabis transporters to move their wares in vehicles where the products are locked tight in a separate compartment. Then there's a second set of locked doors outside. The trucks can't be marked, and at least one crew member has to stay in the vehicle at all times. What is this? This is our um, tracking software platform. Cresco's fleet is monitored in real time. Onboard cameras provide a view inside and outside the trucks, and GPS will alert the company if the truck tries to cross state lines. We know exactly where they're at at all times. But there's a bit of irony here. Remember, in the eyes of the federal government, cannabis is still illegal. But the Illinois guidelines for transporting pot are much stricter than the federal rules for moving much more dangerous drugs. It was very casual. Um, all the product would go into my personal vehicle in a, just a standard Coleman cooler. Cresco's logistics manager, Joseph Franks, told us he used to work for a major hospital transporting everything from chemotherapy drugs to prescription painkillers. Where would it be in the car? It would be in my back seat. The DEA's position on moving even the most abused drugs in America, opioids like OxyContin, is that licensees are simply responsible for getting them where they are supposed to go. The federal regs say all applicants and registrants shall provide effective controls and procedures to guard against theft and diversion of controlled substances. We do have uh, millions and millions of controlled substances that are moved through the system through the mail, through UPS, through FedEx. Former DEA agent Jack Teitelman now works as a consultant on compliance with drug regulations. If you decide that you know your your method of distribution is on the back of a bicycle and a, and a on a backpack because that fits into that neighborhood and you've never had an issue, then that might be the correct way of of making that delivery into that neighborhood. Twenty eight eleven. That is not the case with marijuana in Illinois. Illinois is the most heavily regulated state that we operate in. Heavily regulated and lucrative, with nearly $1.8 billion in sales since it was legalized in Illinois just two years ago. Phil Rogers, NBC5 Investigate.